Hi, I'm Bill Carmody, and I'm the Marketing Whisperer. And today on the program, I have Charlie Javis, from, who's the founder of Frank. Hey, Charlie, how are you doing today? Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so glad to have you on this, on this program. <laughs> so this is such an important topic, and my listeners are going to be so hanging on your every word today, because we're talking about college education, and specifically the financing of college education. And I know that's a huge topic for everybody who's looking, have, you know, even if they have junior high or high school students, but even if they're in grade school, you know, they're looking at sort of how are they going to pay for their kids' education. <laughs> I feel like it's at birth. Some people open like the savings plan and they're like, oh no, what's college going to cost when my kid's going to be 18? Others, it's, oh, I need to put a deposit down. Maybe I should start thinking about this. Uh, it's funny too, because, you know, when my kids were born, so I, I have a 13 year old and I have an 11 year old. And basically when they were born, uh, I looked into this, I, the, all of these um, HSA pro, uh, plans. Yeah. And one of the things that I was really interested in was, uh, sorry, the college savings plans, the 529s. Sorry. Um, a, yep. Yes, five twenty nine A. Sorry, I, I get my I get my healthcare plans confused with my college plans. There's just way too many you know acronyms. You know. All of them. It's like whatever you do, just you can't take the money out of there. <laughs> Well, and so and so, what I found was when I was basically researching these 529 uh, plans and trying to understanding exactly sort of what I could do for the kids' college education, at that time, these were very restrictive. And so at the time, you couldn't use them to pay for books. You couldn't use them for anything that's like, you know, cost of living. Everything had to be very specific tuition, not even fees. And so I thought, you know what, at the time, this doesn't make sense for me. I'm better off investing in the market. And then I came back and sort of said, okay, now they've really opened it up and it's a lot more open. So why don't you tell me a little bit about sort of what Frank does and sort of the connection to some of these different options and understanding how do you really finance your, college, your kids' college education? Yeah. So Frank's really a place to help you get you free money to go to college. So I think everyone can get on board with that. Uh, <laughs> and it's great because it doesn't matter if your mom who's living in Scarsdale that has degree as much as if you're a mom all the way in the South Bronx and might be living on benefits. Um, it doesn't matter who you are. This applies to really most of America, which is why this topic is so exciting. But it's also why it's one of the systematic challenges that we have for our economy and facing families today in the realms of personal finance. Um, and we started, Frank, with really thinking about how are we the ally for the student and the family. There's a lot of bad press around student debt. There aren't many good actors in the space. And we just wanted to stand for something that was honest, that was transparent, and where people can really feel as if they have someone who's got their back. And so Frank kind of represented that as a name because it just meant honest. And also whenever we were interviewing students, it was like, who do you turn to for financial advice? They all named some crazy uncle or some older cousin. And we're like, perfect, Frank sounds the same. It means honest. You could picture this like crazy guy that you turn to for your finances and like it totally works. So that was kind of how, how Frank itself, um, the name was born, but more importantly, it was this kind concept of being the ally for the family. And when you look at that and break it down, you have a couple players in higher education. You have the universities, you have the banks, you have the government, then you have the high schools and the families. And so when you think about and then everyone else making sure that like the kids can go to college, which hopefully include your grandparents and maybe your next door neighbor. Yes. <laughs> uh, their help. Um, but at the end of it, you look at it and you look at the universities and other than like the top schools, they're really pushing for you to enroll because that means more revenue for them. So they aren't going to be on your side when you're negotiating a financial package. They're really trying to maximize the amount of money that they receive from you and from the government. Yeah. Then yeah. you have the banks, which, you know, similar to mortgages, are going to make their profit based on people who don't pay them back on time because that's what interest is. And then you have the government, which they have a cash flow accounting system. System, and they're currently booking student loans as a profit because they don't measure their liabilities. Right. So everyone on that side of the table, I promise, is not rooting for you. Uh, <laughs> so that's one side. Then you have the high school counselors, which in effect, they, it's one of the biggest budget cuts in education that mm -hmm. the country has faced in the past couple of years. So in states like California and New York, you have about one college counselor available for about 1,300 students. Um, that is incredible, and it's amazing how they do it every day because that ratio is crazy. 
And then, you know, you have the family and they try and get as educated as they can. You have nonprofits supporting them. You have grandparents and whoever else of trying to scrape together what resources they could possibly use. Um, and then we said, we think there's a white space for a private company to complement all of the work and really handhold people through the process in a scalable, sustainable way and know that this is a company that stands for a positive mission where we could really get behind this. And that's what we're building here. So, um, so I, I totally understand. I mean, first of all, it's incredibly confusing for the average person to be able to go in and even dissect everything you just said, unpacking what exactly the government is interested in and understanding the way the bank is making their nickel, understanding exactly sort of why, you know, the college isn't your friend financially because they're looking to make money too. So all of that stuff is all interesting. Interesting, but I think what you're saying in terms of that guided process is help me understand when I hire your firm to help me figure all this stuff out, like what is it that you're actually doing for me and my family to make sure that I'm able to get my kids the best possible financial route to college education? So the first step with financial aid is looking at FAFSA, and that's the free application for federal student aid. This one form is responsible for determining how much money you as a family are expected to contribute towards your college education. And that form has been a policy issue for the past 20 years. The formula that is what is important in this form when you input the information spits out this magic number called your EFC, this expected family contribution. And it seems like a black box, so no one understands it. And it's worse because in order to get this number that no one understands, you have to go through hours of pain and labor to be able to submit your information. And while it's great that College Humor and the old you know, First Lady Michelle Obama did an awesome, hilarious video on how easy they thought FAFSA was because it's as easy as putting in your first name. And I feel like we could link to the video in the article. Uh, I promise you that is not what 99% of people who experience filling this form really feel. It takes hours, some people expect it to take days, and to get all the information might mean, oh, I didn't file my taxes, I never thought I needed to because I'm making less than $10,000, and now I find out, and it's too late, and my aid's going to be late. So what we do is make the FAFSA form, and this is the first product, a lot easier, and people are finishing it in under five minutes. Um, and so it's really easy. It's available on your phone, which, you know, with smartphone penetration today is extremely important. Many people don't want to go to the library to find a desktop or to their school. So this is where they are, and we reach them there. Super easy to use. Then we also make sure that the questions are relevant to you. Because on the current FAFSA, you have questions asking an 18-year-old who doesn't have any type of high school degree whether they've served in the armed forces and received you know, veteran benefits personally. And those are not questions that make any sense because you're 18 and to serve in the armed forces, you do need some type of high school um, equivalency. And so you're getting all these questions and really only 30% apply to you. And we find the right 30% based on our technology so that you're going through the, la through the path of least resistance. And that's super important. So instead of 120 questions, we get you down to close to 35, 40. That's a huge amount of time. The second one is all around tax math. So as good as we all think that we are at doing math and understanding our own taxes, um, I think most people will agree that if they were faced with, are you 100% sure and your life depended on it that this is right, most people would definitely say no. Uh, and what we do is undo that entire confusion. So we have you take a picture of your tax returns, the similar way that TurboTax would, and we crunch all the numbers. So the most common mistakes on these forms that really make thousands of dollars of difference would be things like what is your adjusted gross, uh, your adjusted gross income? Many people put their salary. So your adjusted gross income could be more than a couple thousand dollars less. And that ends up hitting you really hard. The other one would be if you file your taxes jointly. How do you put that on the form? So most people end up combining the incomes of two parents when that inflates their numbers really terribly. Other people list things like their homes as assets yet they're living in them. And for FAFSA, that's not something you list. And so we basically break down all of your financial situation 
make sure you're counting what is legally necessary and including the numbers that make sense so that you get the maximum amount of aid. And all this is done in the background, yet we don't hide it from you in the sense that the government has their new IRS tool and they black out all of your tax information so you have no idea what you're submitting. We do not do that. You know exactly what numbers you're giving us. We just happen to make the math easy so you can check it if you want to and edit as you want. And then we lead you into normal English language instead of asking things like state residency, which for some reason students don't necessarily understand. We ask what state would issue your driver's license and everyone knows that. Um, and so and we also offer versions in Spanish. So now by 2020, you have minorities becoming the majority in America. So language and, and being able to understand that, especially when parents are involved, is extremely important. Um, so we take care of all that and people submit it and really painless, or we hope at least our, our reviews and independent verified reviews say so. Um, so it's been really wonderful to see. And once that process is done, we offer several other services to take you throughout the path of financial aid and hope to continue developing them. So one of the ones that we have had tremendous success with is our aid negotiation or aid appeals. So many students don't know that they should never accept their first aid package. Awesome. That's great. I love that. No, it's true. And it's it's crazy. Like when, when I went to uh, Penn, I think my parents might have spent like at least four months rejecting every single answer. Um, and they just ended up getting more and more and more money, which was great. Um, but that took a lot of knowledge and a lot of research. It, it was probably upwards of 50 hours and they had never done this before. And so they got smarter year after year. And my brother was lucky because he was like 14 months younger. And so he, had he got all the benefits of your education. <laughs> Seriously, throughout his entire school career, but I'm very happy for that. He's definitely the most brilliant one of the family. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, like, so, so I'm going to pause that, there I'm for happy. a second because this is really, I mean, this is amazing. I love, I love exactly what you're saying, but what's fascinating to me is even something as simple as rejecting the aid offer. You know, most yeah. people don't understand their rights and they don't understand that this is a negotiation and that basically you're working with the school. Oftentimes they don't realize that the colleges need you as just as much as you need the college. And so understanding that, you know, when you go into a car dealership, you're like, you know what, if, if someone's treating me poorly or I don't feel like I'm getting a good deal, I just walk out and walk down the street. And what they don't realize is that their kid's heart is set on, say, Penn, and that's all they want to do is go to Penn, you know, the, 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 the fact is it's like playing poker at that point where you basically, as long as you don't reveal that this is the only school I care about, this is all I want to do, and this is it, you know, now you basically have, like, there's so many colleges out there that my kid can go to, so let's make sure that the aid package fits our need, and when they realize that, it totally changes the dynamic, you know? And that's so true, which is another reason why, so FAFSA doesn't require you to list any schools, and our, um, our company requires you to list at least four. And the reason for that is exactly what you mentioned, which with regards to when you're applying for school, you should never just have one option. Because when you're gonna negotiate your aid, you need to show that other people will likely give you more money. Um, so you should look at comparable schools and figure out who might be more generous with aid package or if you stand out in specific programs so that you could then turn to your first school that you really want to attend and then say, look, this other school gave me this package. Can you match it? Almost yes. like Amazon or eBay, like just, just go out there. It's price matching. And it takes a lot of time and it takes expertise. It's almost like a legal appeal. And so we've automated that whole process and have case managers that are social workers. Um, and it's just like really awesome and simple. Well, but that's the thing. I mean, it's like having, having an advocate in this process is so priceless because basically when it comes down to it if you don't know what you're doing what you know is that you're going to get screwed like when you're at the poker table i use this great analogy <laughs> if you don't know who the fish is you are the fish right if you don't can't figure out exactly who's going to lose money in this deal you're the one losing money and so the point is you talk to all these people it's like look the banks are going to make as much interest as they can off of you the the, the schools themselves are going to try to get as much out of you without giving you aid as possible because that's how they get their endowments up and they have to get all their money that way the government itself 
office has no real incentive to try to make this easy and painless for you because frankly, they're trying to make money off you too. And so when you look at all these things, it's like you need somebody on your side who's got to like think about this and say, no, reject that offer. That doesn't work. And we play this <laughs> school off of that school because these guys are all rolling in it and they're basically taking advantage of this situation that most people don't realize what their rights are, how they can do it, and what they can do to negotiate a better deal. And basically, if you negotiate a better deal, you're going to save yourself all kinds of debt because what people don't even realize is it's not even the amount you pay. The amount you finance is what the real problem is. <laughs> if you've ever done a housing deal, right? You know, you think your house costs 750000 No, it's in the millions because of the interest. You know, you got to think of it this way. So all every $10,000 you're paying for college that you didn't have to pay is actually calling, costing you a lot more than 10000 when you add interest and time variables into that mix, you know? Exactly. And so that's really where we come in, where we align ourselves 100% with the students. We don't get paid by anyone else other than the family. FAFSA is and always will be free. Um, the reason for that is I think it's a common good. And if we could send more people to enroll, whether it's vocational schools or boot camps or cookie school, truck drivers, as much as it is Penn, I am a really happy person and this company can shut down. Uh, and I know that I'd be very proud of our team and the work our team has done. Um, then the premium services, which require high touch and require yeah. our team to be spending time on, which is why we charge you, um, so yeah. that people that are currently employed <laughs> make something and stay employed. That's where the ink um, negotiation comes in, where we charge a flat $500 fee, but we only charge it after you've received over $500 from the school because of what we've negotiated for you. Our average so far has been close to $7,000 a year that we were able to pull off. And so it ends up being that our economics are 100% for you. It's risk-free to start. And if, we, if you make money, we make money. That's um, so brilliant. So, so I, and I want the audience here to really understand this because this is such an yeah. important thing. Today, it's about performance. You know, you're not paying a fee that basically just says, okay, well, whether we help you or not, here's what it costs. That's basically yeah. the same thing. You know, we're not turning on. It's so awesome because what you're doing is you're essentially aligning your interest directly with the parents and the folks that are flipping the bill and saying, look, if we are able to save you a bunch of money, you know, here's the cost of what we're going to basically charge you, but only if we're able to save you that or more. And in most cases, it's more. And the ROI on that is awesome. So, yes, listen up. <laughs> we're really excited. You know, we're really excited. We think we have a good thing going. Um, and we think families, and, and we've seen it, we have more demand than we're able to handle. And so we're That's staffing right. up. And it's wonderful to see a, a company grow um, from a strong foundation. And I think when you do something that has, you know, is, is mission positive, you do end up making a business out of it. And I think it's really funny from an investor's standpoint, and this is why they see such a huge opportunity is because most people will turn you down because they don't understand financial aid. And as an investor, they've never needed to take out financial aid for themselves or for their children. And so I still remember going into one of the big venture offices in New York where the guy goes, well, I filled out my form in 20 minutes. Why is this so hard? I'm like, might I ask when you filled it out? He goes, graduate school. I'm like, oh, what graduate school were you going to? He goes, HBS. I'm like, oh, really interesting. And did you happen to pay for one finance and made money in the stock market? I said, that's awesome. And what were you doing before that? He goes, well, I did private equity for six years. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm sure you had to fill out tens of thousands of forms in your life and go through diligence. And maybe that's why yeah. it's easy and you should feel really lucky that you didn't actually need to fill this out, but you know, might as well roll the dice. That's not the case for most families. And yes. that's where you end up seeing why um, some companies succeed in, in places of mass market America, where you're touching an American problem versus how to make things that are expensive, easier to buy or easier to deliver. Um, awesome. <laughs> and so I think it's, it happens to be a lot of fun. Well, and I think what's great about that too is, is that really understanding that experience that this is a painful process for most people, which is de definitely true, especially when you're talking about anywhere in the middle class to, to sort of lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, any of the folks that are basically the working public that are trying to basically make ends meet as it is. And there was a statistic in USA Today, which is like 
more than 50% of the people can't come up with over a thousand dollars in an emergency and you're like oh my god right you know because people are basically living hand to mouth so when that's happening right now you're like okay now let's figure out exactly how do I make sure that I get the best possible financial aid package so I can send my kids to a great college and be able to better their lives and at the same time if they're really not focusing on all of the actual costs and the opportunities that are there and they're only thinking about following the rules that everybody else laid out they're really not in the power for negotiation they're not going to be able to be able to get more money out of the actual deal and for them they're going to be overpaying and not even know it and that's the worst part of all is that they just think this is the cost that's how it is that's the worst part because when you think about it people don't even know they're being discriminated against um and so they don't even know what question to ask and so when we're thinking about marketing and explaining what we do which i know is a topic that <laughs> you know you hold uh, near and dear to your heart as a digital marketer when, when you think about explaining what you do and the benefit but people don't even realize that they can do this in the first place. It's a very interesting challenge. Yeah. Um, and so when you think about how to boil it down as to what we do, it's pretty simple. We get you more money to pay for college and we hope to think it's free. And, yes. <laughs> and so beyond that, whether it's scholarships, grants, like federal, state, school, wherever it comes from, at the end of the day, the family is happy as long as they don't need to take out a loan. And it's our job as a company to basically be your advocate and find whatever options there are, bring them to the table so you only see one or two of them that you can feel confident um, that those are the right things to do. So Charlie, I'm officially in love with Frank. I think it's a great company. <laughs> I think it's awesome. I love what you do. I love how many people you help. Um, you know, my, my whole thing is I'm super passionate about helping people become wealthy. I'm very, very interested in sort of the dynamic of what the rich need to do to be successful and the difference in the mind mindset between those people who end up staying middle class and those people who break through and actually create wealth for themselves and retire rich. You know, that's really important. If you can reduce your cost of college, both from a parent's perspective and a kid, God forbid the kids paying for it for themselves, this is a huge debt load. And oftentimes it was always the second most important expensive thing you at, that you had after your house. Now it's actually as expensive in some areas as buying a house. And so it's like, why do you want to have two mortgages? And if you can reduce them as much as possible, I love the philosophy. I love the way in which you get paid. I love the output that you do. And even the service that you're giving to the rest of the world. Amazing. I want to applaud your efforts. Awesome. Thank so you. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. Any, any, anytime you want to come over to the company side, you're more than welcome. <laughs> awesome. It sounds so great. Listen, Charlie, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate your insights. I think everyone here who's watching this today is going to love it. They're going to really appreciate it. They're going to refer back to it often. And certainly they're going to be coming your way to say, hey, help me. I've got kids. They got to go to college. We want to get them in a good school. Let's reduce the amount of fees we have to pay and let's maximize the benefits we can achieve. That's an amazing story. I love what you guys do. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Bring on all the families. <laughs> See you. Right. Bye. Bye.